<laughs> so, um, let's talk about the SciComm Wiki. Uh, but first, I don't want to take up too much time, so I will speed up some things. And second, I don't want to start with a presentation, I want to start with an anecdote. Because the first thing that I learned here in, uh, at the conference was on the very first uh, Monday breakfast that apparently it's uh, no shave November, so I have an excuse. I didn't forget my razor, so no, 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 uh, I'm, I'm participating there. <laughs> and the second thing I learned there uh, was that there are still people who know people who don't believe the moon landing was real. And uh, then that person said, yeah, but uh, what we did was we looked up some videos and there was some, some really cool guy who did a two-hour video of some Apollo landing uh, and it was very interesting how he broke it down into detail and I was just sitting back there and was like, exactly people like those, those two-hour video people, those are the ones that I want to build all of this for. So with this anecdote uh, setting the way, let's talk about the SciComm uh, wiki. So first, three assumptions. There is valuable media online, that guy. Uh, it needs to be curated and highlighted in this moment by the person who said, yes, here is the right video. And Semantic Media Wiki and Wikibase can provide this infrastructure. And I'm here in this room today because I want to ask you this very specific question. Is this the right solution for this? So. Again, this is a really nice video who compared many, many different science communication YouTubers out there. Uh, feel free to play whom do I know or just watch the video. All the slides are online, so feel free to look it up. Um, and there are many, many, many great videos out there. But the bad is that there are many, many not so great videos out there. <laughs> so I said uh, misinformation will be on my third slide today. Here we are. Uh, misinformation is obviously a problem. But, again, my solution, we just curate the freely available videos and we just highlight those that are of particularly value. How do we curate them? We check sources, the background, the veracity, transparency. I can just count those words really easily, but each of them is a dissertation on their own. So, yeah, but let's start somewhere. So, again, the assumption there's valuable media <coughs> online that could inform citizens they are listed among misinformation. So, another issue, not all science videos are open educational resources. So I would consider this problem of open educational resources somewhat solved. There's the Open Educational Research Search Index, there's something like TIP AV portal, all of those are solved. But for example, I don't think that the video of that two hour guy would be listed as an open educational resource. I don't think the person, when they made the video, even know about the concept. So how do we connect the one with the other? This would be my approach to just approach all the data that is already out there and start curating this in something looking similar to this. Um, and then also approach the people and say, here, we can highlight your data, but it would be even better if you put a license on this or something. So we just be the man in the middle between the open educational resource space and the people who are actually putting out the videos out there. And this is for people who have worked with Obsidian, some way how this could look like. We just saw, uh, I would say, much greater visualization uh, just two talks ago. So there's much, much room to grow. And all of this is just local, so this is just how it can look like on my computer. So I'm sure, okay, what I, make, uh, what I create makes sense, but we need to scale this. And I think in this room are many people who were like, yeah, I could do this in Semantic Media Wiki. So, um, yes, my assumption. Uh, we can identify reliable contact to highlight valuable information sources in an accessible knowledge infrastructure. So this was the easy part. Now we go to the complicated part. And I said I will skip over most of this, so I will leave it up hanging here for a second. But for anybody whose attention I caught just now and is interested into this detailed slide or into this detailed slide, feel free to contact me, to approach me. Everything of this is on the site, and if we don't want to, if we want to make it in time, then I will skip over the more complicated part. And I will stick to, we have some presentation layer and some database layer you know all those terms, your history is filled with those, so let's skip over the complicated part. 
Again, the assumption combining a wiki base for classification with a semantic media wiki for larger content can provide the required infrastructure. Think of this as something like uh, wiki data plus wiki source, structured data and the large content in a media wiki. Again, you are in the room to tell me if this makes sense or doesn't make sense. We are now at the verge of having the concept, having the prototypes and actually building something for live uh, production. So for now, let's just look at uh, some quick examples. So this is a YouTube video and you see all the different information, what web platform, thumbnail, duration, title, whatever. You've seen all of this before. But you see that there's no educational level uh, attached, no category, no transcript on the mobile. You <laughs> actually can see the transcript, but apparently desktop users are not allowed to. So uh, yeah, all of this and naturally none of this is truly structured. So yeah, you can see the little chapter bars in there, but other than YouTube, nobody outside has access to this. Uh, we can start to structure some of this, and this is just one of the ways how to do it. So we see which properties could be here, how we could structure them. Again, if you want to see the little fine print, look it up online. Uh, we can see many different presentations, many different videos for many different audiences, and this is mostly the key part. If I go to a video about, I don't know, uh, the theory of relativity, I am stupid, I'm, teach me like a five-year-old, uh, so let's start somewhere, and then I can work my way up, but I can't see it from just the thumbnail maybe or whatever. I need to filter for that. So we continue, we structure all of this, and let's skip over those details. So. Um, now let's go to four conceptual questions which in theory I would open up to a discussion in this room uh, and I see we even have some time so let's just do this. Uh, let's discuss should Wikibase and Semantic Media Wiki be combined in our use case. You've seen that only five people did this in just uh, out of the whatever 70,000 70, yes I think just five people did this. So should we be number six or should we be the 705th person who just uses semantic media wiki for this? And what you can do is you can raise your hand, we can talk about this in this room, or you can just scan the QR code, there's a Google Doc behind it, and you can just leave your notes there and be like, eh, I don't think so. Or have a look at person X, Y, so we can do this a bit asynchronously. Okay, so... Should we do this? Should we combine it? Feel free to raise your hand, feel free to write it down. Uh, I will leave it hanging for a second. Um, some questions. I, I don't mm -hmm. have a preference uh, because I don't know that I fully understand the concept. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just to make sure that my understanding, my understanding from the from the presentations this week is that the advantage of Semantic Media Wiki is the presentation layer in the wiki. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, there's what they do, what they both do is um, collect data in graph uh, format. Mm -hmm. uh, Semantic Media Wiki additionally has a presentation layer mm -hmm. in, in the wiki, um, but its limitation is that it's not easy to analyze the graph mm -hmm. with just Semantic Media Wiki. Mm -hmm. Um, Wikibase also uh, collects all the data in, in a graph format and makes that data available for graph analysis outside of the wiki. So if I understand your question on whether or not to do both, the question is do we want to both curate the graph nodes in the wiki with mm -hmm. Semantic Media Wiki and analyze it outside of the wiki? Um, I think the answer should be be an obvious heck yeah. Yeah, absolutely, 100%, yes. So that would be a plus point for semantic media wiki base, uh, semantic wiki base, what we just heard, combining both. Um, I, I, my, I, Kibana is a tool yes. that I have been told can be integrated. Uh, is that a tool for analyzing the wiki base data? Um, I don't know, I will write it down. Uh, I, I just, in my mind, I went, yeah, Canasta. And I'm like, no, 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 different, uh, Kibana. Uh, I will definitely look into that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
I have one uh, uh, comment on this. Mm -hmm. um, why would you not use Wikidata? Because you are yes. you are annotating publicly available videos, yes. uh, so that should be quite possible in Wikidata, so you don't yeah. need your own installation. Yeah, um, I always put this into one nice sentence. Uh, in my perfect world, I would put all the data into Wikidata and Wiki, all the transcripts into Wikisource. Uh, but the major issue is that my authors aren't dead for 70 years. Uh, so Wikisource couldn't handle the data of the transcripts because they wouldn't be under CC0 or CC, I think CC0 is Wikisource license. So I couldn't put this data there. So I would need some form of secondary platform either way. And I would put everything into Wikidata, um, but I came to the understanding of some form, something diffuse. Uh, I, I couldn't clearly get an answer, but I don't think every video which we would find valuable for this data set would meet the Wikidata criteria. So for example, if somebody just launches their channel, has five subscribers, but does really nice educational videos on how fifth graders learn how to play in groups or something. And 10 people find this helpful. I personally would love to have it in here, but I'm not sure if Wikidata would be like, yeah, wait for them to become like 100,000 subscribers or something. And I know that the bar of Wikidata is lower, but I'm not sure if it's low enough. And so maybe through this talk, I will get a message later on, yeah, just do it, put it in there. Um, so that's why I'm here, reaching out to understand, can I put everything into Wikidata? If so, wonderful. Perfect solution. You can just try it out. <laughs> Be brave. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very nice project, but um, I may raise a question about the target group, but maybe it's also one of your following up questions. I mean, at the end, you want to convince people to not trust uh, a data source or trust another data source more. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think the main issue is that people that trust in misinformation mm -hmm. usually don't trust an authority. Yes. And if you do tell them that's better than, than this, then you became authority mm -hmm. and you do not believe them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe, maybe it's the wrong place, but it, how would be a mechanism to reach a target group mm -hmm. um, this? This great effort. Mm -hmm. I think Google, idea was, idea would be uh, YouTube would have created an index yeah. and display it, but yeah. I think that will not happen. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, perfectly great question. Uh, everybody who's been here yesterday heard my answer to what can we do about disinformation. We little to nothing. Everything that can be done on knowledge management base is done by Wikipedia. Period. Like, we are specks of dust in this uh, great thing. Uh, I think the next level is interpersonal relationships. I don't think I will convince anybody's uncle in here, but maybe that person has a chance to convince their uncle. And I'm trying to put out the tools of somebody who's been years and years trying to convince somebody to make their life 50% easier. So maybe they are like, oh, no, that's, that's not, not, not worth it. I'm not going to do that. Wait, there's a tool who which kind of helps me. Yep, so maybe now it passes my threshold and now, now I try to do it. Uh, so I'm more relying on uh, synergetic effects, let's call it that. So to put the tools into the people who can actually change the things, into the hands of the people who can change things. I don't think I can change things, but I believe that they could do, so I'd like to help them. Yeah. Also, we saw at uh, COVID times, that trust in science actually spiked, mostly because of science videos, science podcasts. I could name five different people in Germany who convinced those family dinners when you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure, what, what should I believe? Yeah, then just watch the two-hour podcast of Drosten and listen to him. Oh, listen, you can't watch the podcast. Um, and then after those two hours, they came back to the next dinner and were like, yeah, he has some points, so... Mm. <laughs> So that's the level I would play at. Yeah, good answer. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, then next question: Anybody who has already scanned the code, uh, what dashboards are out there? We just saw um, 
fantastic visualizations just by the by Koya before that. Uh, if you know any dashboards to engage people, because I think that's the first getting over the threshold. If they just see another wiki text, they immediately click away. But if they see, ooh, star map, then their attention is caught, and then maybe you can get into something. So if you know any extensions <laughs> or something, feel free to add it in there. Uh, given how much wealth we got out of the, out of the conversation just now, uh, I would skip over, oh, maybe, yeah, sure. I think this is a really, really good point. I mean, we all, we all know the headlines about misinformation and, and how these this videos also spy on YouTube that that they uh, that they are telling bullshit actually. And I, you realize if you see, as you shown, like a separation of quality, the quality axis in the graph, and maybe also what is the dynamics of misinformation. I mean, you really have the chance to do to science on that. Yeah. To show how it spreads and how it how it peaks in the attention of the people, and maybe what in which cases it was kind of uh, yeah maybe uh, compensated to other mechanisms you know, like scientists go public with podcasts, and it would be nice to bring this attention more and also to analyze what we can do against it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Okay. Let's not linger on extensions. Um, then. Uh, uh, I would also not linger here too long. Currently, we are on Mirahese uh, for the content, uh, for the transcripts, and for on wikibase.cloud for the structured data. We will try to launch our own with Wikibase for Research, what we just saw, um, but we still need the resources for this. But yeah. So where should we put the data? We just heard Wikidata would be the perfect place for this. So I just hope I can yell into the room and anybody has a contact of the person in charge of Wikidata or whatever, or the group. Or, so I think, yeah, Wikimedia is not here anymore. Yeah. yeah. So uh, absolutely perfect. Um, so let's talk about where would be the perfect place to host this but maybe not in the final 10 minutes. Um, and then my current approach was, okay, maybe I can just attach myself to something like the Wikimedia Foundation or the Open Knowledge Foundation or be some sub-branch of anything of those big players. But currently, uh, or my, my realization was, okay, what I'm doing is still too, too confusing. I need to structure it a bit more. So last year we founded a nonprofit organization uh, called Borgnetzwerk for now, uh, but consider something like a uh, society for structuring scientific communication, something like that. Um, so my question would be how to scale such a solution. So Wikimedia scales just by virtue of Wikipedia. This won't. My approach would be to attach to the science communication YouTubers and to basically help them make their things better and then vicariously, uh, symbiotically grow with them. Uh, that would be my approach. But I also think that connections to developers or people like you here would be essential or even, even better than the other half. So one is publicity, but the other one is value. And I think we also need connections to people like you to actually get the value into the, let's call it product for now, into the community, into the infrastructure. So how would you do that? Um, so I think you need to do a browser extension that people can install and uh, figure out multiple ways that you want people to rate each video, educational, not educational, for children, not for children, uh, like fun and boring <laughs> maybe. Um, and in exchange for installing the extension, they get that added to their YouTube page uh, and it's like mm -hmm. it, it inserts that into the DOM on YouTube. And then uh, they can also vote on any video that they have. And uh, the, the more they vote with agreement to the majority, the more of their vote counts in the future or something so that you can establish trust that way. And for like very prolific uh, voters, I would probably like do some manual verifying that they're actually uh, putting for good things. So I think you have to decentralize with your brother attention. Yeah, yeah. This is already a, a perfect segue, thank you very much, because now I have to skip over some slides. 
And uh, you see there's a second QR code. So those are different. And this one asks exactly the question you just answered. How? So how should this look like? How, how would you realize it? What would you do? What criteria do we need? And uh, this is just a Google document. This is a whole master thesis behind this. So all of this has launched on Monday. Maybe some of you have already seen this. This is just the info slide with everything you just heard on one slide. And the most important thing is this tiny QR code. Um, uh, yeah, let, let's just leave it hanging. I also have this slide, which makes it easier to scan. So, but yeah, let's just leave it hanging for now. Um, because the main idea is if we just ask structured questions, like what extension, then maybe we miss something of all your expertise in this room. So my perfect scenario would be that when I go home, my master student tells me, okay, 10 people signed up for an interview, and over the next three weeks, I will be talking 10 minutes to many of the people in this room right now. And then in one year, when we meet in Hannover, you can see the final thing that has been built for one year with all the feedback of you in there. Uh, and that would be my, again, dream scenario. Uh, and given what I heard in the past three days, I think we can be there in one year where I thought we would be in maybe five. So if we all just crowdsource, sign up for the interview, uh, I think we can get something done. And that's the majority of my talk. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for saving time because we have some announcements also to make. Uh, thanks again, and we will surely uh, try to help you out as much as we can. Uh,